Hi, my name is Joe Haney. Um, I have been a, an enthusiast uh, for solar power for probably 20 plus years. Um, I remember buying my first kit from Harbor Freight and figuring out how to hook it up to a, a deep cell marine battery and etc. Uh, way, way back when they very, very first came out. Uh, and I've just recently completed putting in a DIY off-grid solar system in a farm home that we have uh, that was built back in 1890, I believe, a pioneer home built by hand, um, retrofitted, I'm guessing, with power in the early 1900s. Um, no ground wires in any of the wiring, etc. Beautiful uh, home and we love it, but trying to figure out how to do solar there was um, a big challenge. I, I did come up with a way to do that and I uh, wanted to share some of that with you. But first, for beginners, just very simply, what are the components of a solar system? used to be a lot more complex. Um, it's less complex today. It's kind of plug and play. Uh, the components have gotten much easier. Most solar panels are very standard. They have a, a male and a female connector and you can daisy chain them. But solar panels are kind of a commodity. They last a long, long time, 20, 30 years. So the inverter does a, a number of jobs. It brings in the power from the uh, solar panels and it brings in the power from the grid. And it's also a battery controller. If you need a, a backup, uh, say a generator, you can hook that up um, and it manages all of that stuff. Uh, and the bigger ones can handle, um, you know, 220. And it has enough power to power uh, an air conditioning unit uh, or some, I don't know, compressor or something that uses a ton of power. So that's what the inverter does. Uh, you could just run your home from the inverter, which would use solar, you know, when that was available and then would use the grid otherwise. Um, but really the best way to use it, uh, this combination of the solar system, is to add some storage and that would be the battery. Um, I mentioned that way back in the day I was using lead acid batteries. You could still do that. They're not the, they're, they're not as efficient. They're way heavier per um, storage capability. The current best alternative is something called the LIFEPO4, L-I-F-E-P-O, the number four. Um, that's really what any solar system battery these days is going to be um, made from. I mean, they're in, in, internally, they're, they're all a bunch of battery cells, um, LifePo battery cells that have been lumped together and, and connected in a way that you get the capacity you need. The main difference that I have in the two different battery systems that I got is that the one for our primary home uh, being cheap, like I notoriously am, uh, I ended up getting um, LifePo batteries that did not have a communication uh, layer. All of them have a, a, what's called a BMS or battery management system, but mine in at our main home does not have, that BMS does not communicate uh, its state of charge, for instance, to an inverter. Um, the, you can get the ones to do, and, and I got that in the other one. You just plug in a communication cable and then you plug it into the inverter. And and you you can, you know, the, the inverter then knows exactly the state of the battery and when to charge it, when not to charge it, etc. If you don't do that, um, it's got, there's a bit of a hassle, which is you, you have to tell the inverter um, some other way than the percent state of charge um, to uh, know when to charge and when to just you know stop charging and and that other way is voltage 
The problem with voltage is that it's imprecise. You can have a battery that's almost full and have the same voltage as a battery that's about half full. So um, you don't, you know, you managing it is um, it's a little bit trickier, and it's taken me several months uh, at our main home to uh, fine tune and tweak the battery charge you know, parameters that I put into the inverter so it would know what to do. Um, for our farm home, we have a wall-mounted battery. It's, uh, it's by a company, a Chinese company called Ruxu, R-U-I-X-U, um, uh, 314 amp hours. So it's pretty good size. Um, I'm noting that that battery goes down maybe 20%. 15 to 20 percent overnight um, so I could run on that battery probably three or four days uh, if it's fully charged with just my normal usage there in at our main home that would be probably two days um, just because uh, we use a lot more power I really like the um, EG4 products uh, I in our main home I put in a 12,000 XP and you might look at my channel and see the video on the installation for that um, the junior brother of that uh, is what we put in at our farm home and it it's called the EG4 6000 XP um, which was more than adequate for that home uh, these two inverters that I got are deliberately not the kind that feed back into the grid they're called off-grid inverters although they do receive power from the grid if you need it to. Um, they are designed specifically not to feed back excess power to the grid. I prefer an off-grid system. In most states, you can do it yourself uh, on your own home. And really, those are the key components. You need solar panels, you need an inverter, an all-in-one inverter, and you need batteries. Uh, and there are a lot of different flavors of those, but they're, they're all pretty much plug and play. They're not complicated. Beyond that, you're going to need to um, know enough about wiring to connect up to your house and, um, you know, to use a sub panel and that kind of thing. You know, even if you're doing it yourself, you need to um, understand enough about uh, the electrical codes um, it's called the NEC or the National Electric Code to, uh, you know, to comply with that so that you have a safe installation. So, I mean, they're just really basic things like you never make wire connections outside of some sort of box. It could be a, uh, a junction box. You can, you can do it in a you know, some sort of electric sub panel, it's okay to make electrical connections there. You never make an electrical connection just in the wall. You want that to be in a house, in a housing and, and contained so that people can't be putting their fingers into it or run across it and, and touch it. You need to be thoughtful about the, the gauge of wire that you use, depending on how much electricity you're gonna have go through it. And the lower the number, uh, the thicker the wire. I mean, a, a one, a zero uh, gauge wire is as thick as my thumb. It's big, fat wire. You can use that typically for, um, you know, something like battery cables need to be very heavy duty. Um, the, the load that I put on my solar panels, I use um, uh, 10 gauge. You know, putting a sub panel up involves having breakers. Uh, and so understanding a, a double pole breaker is one where you basically have two breakers that are attached and next to each other. And that lets them connect to both of the, the 110 sources in the panel. So that becomes a, two, a 220, right? Um, and then the size of the amperage that you're going to use it will depend uh, you know, on what draw your house has. For our farm home, I have a 60 amp breaker that's running that whole sub panel, and I'll show you a little bit more about that. 
uh, for our primary residence uh, with using the uh, 12,000 XP, I have a 100 amp service. Uh, and again, if you're com uncomfortable at all with um, those electrical concepts, then spend the money and hire an electrician to come in and connect those things up for you. Um, you'll still save a, a ton of money, I promise you, uh, in the do-it-yourself uh, experience. And you'll learn a lot. Um, you know, there's there's fun in, so in problem solving and getting your head around something, at least to me, uh, in do-it-yourself. Probably goes without saying, but uh, we should talk about it. Um, the orientation of your solar panels matters. Um, the ideal orientation would be that if the sun is coming in, they would be perpendicular to it. It would they would hit the sun would hit it directly. So if it's you know tipped further this way or tipped further this way, it's not going to be as efficient. Um, but the efficiency losses, um, I don't worry about that much because. You, Solar panels are cheap. You can, you know, you can just add more panels. And um, if your roof isn't perfect, and the one that we have in our uh, main home is not, it's very relatively flat roof. It's not flat, but it's a, you know, it's not. It's it's certainly not the forty degree angle, um, and it does fine. Uh, and we, you know, we've put a lot of. Uh, we probably put some extra panels in there that we wouldn't have needed otherwise. Um, there are systems that are rack mounted, um, that follow the sun, etc. Uh, but at least by my calculations, I'm not getting as much bang for the buck with a follow the sun system or some sort of extra um, uh, racking that, than just buy more panels. Uh, for my friends in uh, Australia or New Zealand or anywhere in the southern hemisphere in Brazil, um, you're going to need to have them north facing. Um, so again, just intuitively, you'll need to find a spot um, on your home or on your property to mount solar panels facing the sun, the predominant way the sun is going to be coming in. Um, you can lay them on the ground if you weren't you know, worried about kids stomping on them. Uh, you can put them on a fence, you can put them on a roof, you can, um, you can obviously get rack mounted uh, uh, panels and put them that way. So, uh, several choices. Without further ado, let me just show you some of the video and some of the things that uh, I've learned over time uh, and how we applied them on this older home. It has a really old panel, but we would probably need to redo the wiring in this house if we were to bring everything up to code because it's so old. Um, and trying to figure out how to install solar here was tricky. Um, there is a shutoff outside and it ran, that power ran up into this panel. So for installing solar, we put now at the end of this, a, uh, a new sub panel, uh, and this is a, an EG4 6000 XP uh, inverter. And you can see I've got a Rushu wall battery, uh, about 314 amp hours, and. Um, What I ended up doing was bringing the power that used to connect into that panel there, bringing that up through the uh, attic and down through the ceiling. And then over that, that becomes the grid feed for the inverter. And then the load runs back out here and into the uh, the new sub panel, and then I've got uh, a 60 amp uh, service running kind of back up in here into the roof and back across and fed the panel from that. 
So essentially the, without having to rewire everything, I've uh, just rerouted it so that the inverter um, is feeding the sub panel here is along with, um, you know, other things that I may want to run. Uh, I've got uh, some cottages, etc. Uh, that, uh, you know, there's room to expand here. And of course, the other big challenge was getting the solar panels up, a very steep roof, which is wonderful, by the way. Well, in our location, uh, the roof is a 40 degree angle pitch. That's wonderful for the south facing sun. Um, so it's, it's great for our solar system, but um, terrible for, for doing the installation. And I found a couple of cool tools. I want to show you these pitch hoppers, they're called. Um, and it's for getting up on a really steep roof like I have here. This serves as a step and underneath is a, a layer of foam. It works on uh, those asphalt shingles. When you put when you put pressure on this, this presses against the shingles and it's kind of like Velcro. Um, I drilled a little hole and tied these things together so that I could um, be standing on one, pull the other one up and put it ahead of me. So I could just kind of uh, make my way up the roof and make my way down the roof while I was uh, putting up the solar panels. Even with the pitch hoppers, you need a rope. I ran, ran a rope over the roof, uh, tied it to a tree and then uh, put this harness on um, and you buckle, you connect that harness um, to, uh, to, this, to this clip so that you're clipped in. You run the rope um, through this and it uh, is a one way. You, know, you can loosen it if you go deliberately, but it's a one way so that if you fall, this harness is gonna catch you. Some panels up on this uh, little extension of the house. Uh, and you can see we put eight of them up there. Um, the roof wasn't quite large enough, so we had to mount them in a way that uh, a couple of them overlap the edge. Um, and then the solar cables come down in and and uh, I've got some some breakers here before they go into the house and uh, and then into the inverter hey if you've lasted this long congratulations and thank you um, if you're interested in solar power you probably have your own personal reasons for uh, that interest often it's saving money and sometimes it's um, grid security you know being able to stay up when the grid goes down. Um, both of those are true for me. Uh, and in addition, I like the feeling of being able to use a resource that is um, God-given. I mean, it's coming down to us. Uh, the sun shines on us all the time. And uh, to be able to use that to charge up an electric car, to um, run my air conditioner. The first time I, I uh, walked into a home that had um, solar power going, uh, they were watching TV and I was just kind of shocked, blown away that they were watching TV by the power of the sun. And um, now that I have it in my home, uh, it's had an interesting effect. I, I, I'd never thought about wasting sunshine but when I've had times when I had to, you know, maintain the system or bring it down, I get a little anxious, like, hey, there's sun shining out there and I'm not capturing it. I'm, I'm sort of wasting it. Um, but there's something beautiful to me about being able to um, utilize this incredible resource, the, uh, the sun that's available in most parts of the world, um, most of the year round. So I would encourage you, one way or the other, to go look into solar power. Um, and if you're brave and um, interested in learning some new things, uh, take the do-it-yourself journey. I think you'll enjoy it.